The most common question I receive when teaching struggling math students is who invented algebra and why did they even bother? Well, the word algebra comes from the Arabic word aljabra, which means the reunion of broken parts, and can be traced back to a text produced by the renowned Arabic mathematician and scientist Al-Khwarizmi. However, the history of algebra is far more complex, with contributions from practically all major civilizations through history. The ancient Mesopotamians and Egyptians were some of the first to use algebraic concepts such as letters to represent unknown quantities. The Mesopotamians used tables on clay tablets to aid calculations. For example, two tablets found in Sankara dated to around 2000 BC give square numbers up to 59. Using the formula presented, they were able to simplify multiplication. And in ancient Egypt, we see the Moscow and Rhine papyri which contain examples of how they employed algebra to solve problems. These are called Eha problems which involve finding unknown quantities and are often expressed as simple linear equations. The Egyptians also used quadratic equations as seen in the Berlin papyri. The ancient Greeks who followed the Mesopotamians and Egyptians also made significant contributions to the development of algebra. The most notable of these contributions come from two mathematicians, Euclid and Diophantus and the instrumental text, The Elements and Arithmetica. Euclid employed the use of what we now call geometric algebra. This involves using geometry to demonstrate mathematical concepts such as the distributive property, which can be shown by splitting a rectangle into separate chunks. Unlike typical Greek mathematicians who use geometric methods, Diophantus solved equations using algebraic quantities. He presented this in a series of writings called the Arithmetica, and presents what is the first known use of algebraic notation and symbolism in what we refer to as syncopated algebra. Moving away from Mediterranean civilizations, we see significant developments and uses of algebra in ancient Indian civilizations. The Bakshali manuscript contained worked examples for calculating the square roots or solving linear equations. Let's draw focus to two particular Indian mathematicians, Brahmagupta and Bhaskara. Brahmagupta is an immensely influential mathematician who developed the rules for computing with zero, as well as algebraic contributions in the Brahma Sputta Siddhanta. Here he presented general solutions to linear equations and also proceeded to give the general solution for a quadratic equation, something we can recognize as very similar to the quadratic formula. And Bhaskara produced a work of algebra across 12 chapters, the Bijanganita, or the algebra of the Hindus. It contained many methods to solve and process algebraic problems and presents the Chakravala method. This is seen in an eight-line Sanskrit poem and is a cyclic algorithm to solve indeterminate quadratic equations. And now moving even further east to the Chinese civilizations, we have seen many major developments. These are typically presented in an anonymous collective of results, the most influential of which is the nine chapters on the mathematical art. Compiled by Liu Hui, it presented advanced concepts such as Gaussian elimination over 1500 years before Gauss, and other techniques such as Horner's method. So we just have one more civilization to cover, it's where the book al Jabbar originated, it's the Arabian civilization. This was written by the Persian mathematician al Khwarizmi, who is often cited as the father of algebra. It is the first text to teach algebra in an elementary form for its own sake. The book gives a systematic approach to solve linear and quadratic equations by reduction and then completion or balancing methods. The first step is to identify which of the six forms the equation can be written as. This is the reduction step. Next there is a series of completion or balancing steps to remove extraneous terms. Once an equation is in one of the six forms, you can follow methods in the book to solve this for the value of the unknown x. The book was extremely influential as it was translated and spread widely, being used as a primary text in European universities for centuries. And this probably contributed to the status of al as the father of algebra. But we can see that these concepts were very similar to those shared by other mathematicians such as Diophantus or Brahmagupta. And it just points to the fact that algebra is not a field that was the result of the discovery of one person through history. It was the summation of contributions through time by many mathematicians across many civilizations. Summaries in history often overlook these contributions, and this extends across mathematics in general. Click the link to find out about some of the mathematicians history underappreciates, or perhaps you're interested in the history of computer science. Subscribe for more content, and thanks for watching.